How you doing? I'm your man, John Wilson. We got a good one for you today. We're going to finish up module 10. We can slide back into module 9.5 for a second to finish that up. And when we're done with this, it's almost test day. Today, we will understand what the connection is between transformations and congruent figures. And we will define congruency. Additionally, we will examine the connection between transformations and similar figures, and then we'll go and we'll define similarity. So today's lesson is all about congruency and similarity. How and why are figures congruent? How and why are they similar? And what exactly is the difference between congruent figures and similar figures? Now this slide on your notes is super important because this has all of the changes that happen for transformations and it has all the rules here except for dilation. So if you just go to this slide and write in the rules for dilations according to notation, you have just about everything you need for your exam. All on one nice neat little slide rather than having to hunt for it. My advice to you is to bring all your notes for your exam but to go and definitely write the rules for dilations down here. Bring that so you're looking in one place. It'll save you time. Efficient test taking skills. So anyway, let's talk about exactly what congruency is. In order to do that, we have to remember that the lines and the angles of pre-images and their images have the exact same length and degrees under a translation, reflection, or a rotation. So if we slide a figure, if we turn a figure, or if we flip a figure, which means if we translate it, rotate it, reflect it, all of the sides remain the same length. All of the angles remain the same degrees. Two figures are said to be congruent if one can be obtained from the other by a sequence of translations, reflections, and rotations. Congruent figures have the same size and shape. The key thing about congruent figures is if you look here, which one of the transformations is missing? Which one? You see, three out of four. One of the transformations is missing. Which one's missing? No, not the position. A specific oh. member of the transformation family is conspicuously absent. Corey, what's absent? Uh, the and the no, we're talking about there's four types of transformations. They are on the paper in front of you. One of them is missing when we talk about group figures. Maybe what do you got? Dilations. Dilations. You notice that dilations is missing here. For a figure to be congruent, you can not dilate it. That's pretty much the definition of a congruent figure. Yes, you have to find a sequence to get one figure, such as figure A, and turn it into figure B, but the most important thing you need to remember is that for something to be congruent, the one thing you cannot do, congruent, you cannot dilate it. If you dilate it, can anybody tell me why it's no longer be congruent? Anybody have an idea? Connor Dreams, why? Because it'll be larger or smaller. Because it'll be larger or smaller. Remember congruency, now the angles don't change, right? If this is a square, even if I make it smaller, it's still a smaller square, it's a horrible square. But all the angles will still be 90 degrees, right? But we don't care about the angles so much as we care about the length of the sides. If this is four here, and we shrink that down, and it's two, is it congruent? No, because they're not the same. So if you ever see a dilation, automatic. Not congruent, automatic. Now similar figures, we'll get into later, similar figures, you can dilate. That's the big difference. In congruent figures, no dilation. In similar figures, you are allowed to dilate. That's a key difference. And you're going to see that pop up over and over and over again in your notes. We'll get back to that in a second. Right now, I want you to understand that figure A and figure B are congruent. Figure A is my pre-image. Figure B is the image. They are congruent. They are the exact same size, but... Do they have the same position, yes or no? no? Do they have the same orientation, yes or no? No. So for us to be able to prove that they are congruent, we must identify something known as the sequence. The sequence is the series of translations, reflections, or rotations that maps one image into the other. Now, not all figures are congruent. They just don't. Some figures will not be congruent. And one of the easiest ways to see if they're not congruent is if size is different or the shape is different. 
you're dealing with two different shapes. I mean, let me ask you a question here. This is just, it, this is just basic. If you have a square and you have a circle, are they going to be congruent? <laughs> Obviously not. If you have a right triangle and an isosceles triangle, are they going to be congruent? No. no, they're not. Okay, so the shape is immediate. You see the shape? No. Size is the other thing. But if we do believe they are congruent, we have to find the sequence. And I'm going to say this over and over. If a figure is dilated, you'll see this one sentence right here about three or four times. If a figure is dilated, it does not maintain the congruency of its sides, only its angles. So therefore, a dilated image is no, no. not congruent. You'll see that over and over again. I like to drive that home. But the real question is, if there is a sequence that turns A into B, what is the sequence? This next slide is mostly visual. You'll only be writing in one thing at the bottom, so I need you to pay attention. That's what this slide is all about. Now, we know that this is our pre-image. We know that this is our image. We need to figure out how we can turn this into this. But right now, let me just take this top one here and just move it out of my way. I don't need you yet. No, no, I don't want the whole thing. I just want the top one. You can stay over here for right now. So we want to figure out how we can turn this pre-image into this image. And when you do this, you go through and you ask yourself a series of questions. The first question you want to ask yourself, we do this in alphabetical order, M-N-O-P. O stands for orientation, P stands for position. So the first thing you always want to ask yourself is did the orientation change from the pre-image to the image? Did it change, yes or no? Yes, I think it changed. If you look here, this kind of looks like a fighter jet, right? A little window there, little thing here. Fighter jet's going that way, right? No, you don't see the fighter jet. I okay. see the wing. What did you see? You know what a fighter jet is? No. An airplane, a fighter plane? Jet. Fighter, not fighter. The Air Force, fighter. they fly around in jets, You're defending our skies. Uh, and missile orders everywhere. Okay. everywhere. A fighter jet? You ever seen Top Gun? What? Tom Cruise, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, Tom Cruise. They know nothing about the danger zone. All right, so let's pretend, let's pretend then that this is an arrow. And here is kind of an arrow, a really badly shaped arrow. You see how it's pointing in that direction? If we look over here, see how it's pointing in the other direction? So when you see that, that's a big indicator that the orientation has changed. So which of the two transformations that we can use for congruency change orientation? Which ones? Which ones change orientation? Uh, rotation. Rotation is one of them. What's the other one that changes orientation? Uh, reflection. reflection. So we know that somewhere in the sequence to turn this into this, there's either a rotation or a reflection. So we can try both. We can try to see if we rotate this figure, will we get the correct orientation? So we can try rotating it 90 degrees clockwise. That didn't work. Try rotating it again. Do we have the right orientation now? No. Try rotating it one more time. Do we have the right orientation? No. no. So our rotation's not going to work here. So if a rotation doesn't work, we can go in and we can try something else. What's the other transformation that changes? You better just. What's the other transformation that changes orientation, Matthew? A reflection. So we could go in and we could try to reflect this figure, but which axis would we reflect it across, Matthew? The y. the y axis, yeah, because we're trying to get it over here into quadrant number two. So let's bring this guy back in from the soundproof booth. He doesn't know what was going on. We're gonna take him in here. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna reflect this figure. Let's reflect you. Come here. And transform. And let's flip you across which axis? Y. Y. We'll flip them. And where should this guy end up? Down here? No. no. Over here? No. no. Up here? No. Right here? No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying no, right. you're correct. No. It shouldn't be there. It should be right. there. Okay, right here. I know it's what's bothering you. It should be here. How can you tell? One unit there. away from the Y axis, one unit away from the Y axis. Okay, so we have our figure reflected. So we know that we had to do a reflection across the y-axis, but it is not totally congruent yet. For it to be congruent, this figure should fully overlap that one. So there's something else that has to happen here. Emily, what's your question? Why was the green one here? The green one, that's my pre-image, that's my image. We're trying to figure out how to turn the blue into the green. This tells us where we need to end up. 
this tells us where we started. So we're trying to identify a sequence of transformations that will turn the blue one, put it in the exact same position, the exact same orientation as the green one. So the green one kind of gives us our goal. It's like the finish line. Mm -hmm. That's the start, that's the finish. You're trying to run to the finish line. Mm -hmm. Okay, Connor, what's up? Oh, I was gonna tell you. Okay, what could you do? Translate it. You could translate it. Up? No. Down? No. To the left? No. To the right? I mean, to the left. To the oh, left. So what depends? You have your left yeah, my is that right. one. Yeah. But my left is that one. So who's left? My left, your right. Yes. You're right, okay. <laughs> so we make it one spot to Connor's left, and we're good. We did a reflection, we did a translation. Question. Wait, so when it's like off a little, you just move it? You can slide, remember we can slide. No, you just move it? No, like you just move it? Yeah, you can just move it over. Okay, now just move it. That's it, it's just that simple. But you have to go back and identify the sequence. And when I say identify the sequence, you're not going to tell me I reflected it and I translated it. You need to tell me coordinate notation. So what was the first thing we did here? What was the first thing we did in order to make these figures be growing? We reflected. Reflected it across the y-axis. Yes. You should have those rules still in front of you. Give me the coordinate notation for that. What was the coordinate notation for reflection across the y? Oh, negative x comma y. Negative x comma y. Good. And what was the second thing we did? Translation. Translated it one unit left. When we go one unit left, is that going to change the x or the y? The x, because this is the x-axis, we're moving left to right. So if we're moving left, is that adding or subtracting from the x? Subtracting. subtracting. How many units did we move? One. one. So we're subtracting one. one from the x, and your coordinate notation would look just like that. So we end up with negative x comma y followed by x minus one comma y. You must put the followed by down on any exams, quizzes, tests, or notes, that's important. Because if not, if you don't separate them, I'm not gonna know what you're talking about. Neither will anyone else. Can I just put them? Is that an error? Well, can I just put no, you have to put yeah. followed by. Oh, that's so clever. <laughs> can you put FB? You can put FB. Then I want this one. Oh, okay. This one's coming up next. <laughs> right, yeah, we'll go back this one. Okay, so there's more than one way to do this. There absolutely is. But what we're looking for is the shortest, most efficient way. Most of these congruent transformations, you can do in two steps. Very rarely should you have to go more than two steps. Now, if you're taking an exam or a quiz, if you do more than two steps, as long as your transformation correctly maps it, in this instance from J to K, I don't care. If you do it in four moves, that's fine as long as they all make sense. Nothing redundant. You wouldn't say, well, I reflected across the Y, then back across the Y, <laughs> then across the X, and then I rotated it, and then I slid it. I did six things. I could have just done two. And on your paper, I might write something like, why did you waste all of this time when you could have been sliding into somebody's DMs? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's figure out how we turn J into K. Who wants to help me with JK? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we always try to deal with orientation first, just like the alphabet O comes before P. So we gotta figure out how to get that figure orientated correctly. We're starting with J, and we're trying to transform it into K. So obviously the orientation needs to be fixed. Rotation or reflection, what do you think would fix this orientation? A reflection, okay. So tell me, how do you want to reflect this figure? Let's test it. Don't draw anything, we're just, we're testing this. It's all visual, test me. Um, what axis do you want to rotate it across? The x-axis. So if you rotate this across the, uh, sorry, reflect this yeah. across the x, it would look just like that. Mm -hmm. Does that fix your orientation problem? Um. No, because right now, we can almost pretend that this is this eraser here, right? If you took it and you just reflected it across, we need it to fall over on its side. So we've got to try something else. Let's think about what else we can try. Lucas, what do you want to try? Our rotation. Rotation, all right. We have a whole bunch of different rotations we can do, so. Uh, we rotate it to the right, fall, like, the whole You gotta tell me, 90 degrees clockwise, counterclockwise, uh, 180 90. degrees, 270, 360 divided by, what would you still make? <laughs> Which one? 90, 90, 90 degrees, degrees clockwise. Clockwise, so 90 degrees clockwise is gonna take us from here and we're gonna end up, I'll show you, we're gonna rotate this, and I'll show you exactly where we're gonna end up. You don't need to draw this in. This is all visual, I want you guys to understand how this works visually. Okay, so the question is, 
Did you fix the orientation problem? Let's see. Well, I don't know why the sound effects, but yes, the orientation has been fixed. And there's only one move left in order for you to get this in the correct position. Do you know what that move is? Uh, it's a slide. It's a slide, but what's the slide? Um, so what would the slide be? You want to go from point to point. Transfer. A, a translation, yeah, you want to translate it. That's a slide. But what would you translate? Up, down, left, or right? It's probably yeah. going to be a combination of both. Okay, so left, how many units? One. Left, one unit, and then up or down? Uh, down, like, down, like, um, four, uh, three units. Let's check it. Let's see. So we're going left, one. Left, one, and then down, one. Two. Three. He's got it, man. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. All right. He's got it. It's a little crooked. It's a little crooked, but we'll, that's my fault, not his. We got it. It's right there. So that series works. It was just two moves. Is that the only way you can solve this problem? No. no. There's lots of different ways. He could have rotated it 90 degrees counterclockwise. counterclockwise. He would have ended up right about here. No, he would have ended up here. Yeah. And then he could have just slid it over one spot. But his way works, it would be marked correct on an exam if it was a short answer question where you're being asked to identify a sequence. So for this sequence, we're gonna go with Lucas's method here, but what we need, the answer, is in coordinate notation. So since that was your sequence, tell me, Sad, what is your coordinate notation? Um, He's like, ah, oh, man, do you remember what you did? Yeah, it's... <sighs> My coordinate notation is, uh... Shh. What was the first thing you did? The first thing I did is, was I, um... Rotated it 90 degrees clockwise. So go to your rules. What's the rule for that? Just hand, please. Um, 90, 90 oh, degrees oh. clockwise rotation. What is that? Remember, we're multiplying and switching, so you should be starting with not X, but Y. Uh... 90 degrees clockwise. What do we got? Um... Uh, y comma negative x. Y comma negative x. Is that correct, class? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then what comes between this and the translation? What words? Um, two words. F B. Oh. Uh, or followed, followed, followed by. by. Followed <laughs> by. If you want to write F B, write F B. But it's followed by what? What'd you do next? Um. Uh, X. Uh, <coughs> no, you did something to the X. What'd you do? I'm just writing you. You can uh, tell me the addition or subtraction. What'd you do? You moved it one unit to the right. Left. left. So is that addition or subtraction from the X? Uh, uh, subtraction. Subtraction. How many? One. Minus one. And then, did you move up or down? Down. How many units? Three. Is that addition or subtraction? Subtraction. Subtraction. So we're subtracting three. That is a good sequence. You could have done this, you could have done a rotation in the other direction. Either one of those would have been fine. Yes? So the first pair, the x comma, the y comma negative x, why is there negative x? Um, well, is that the rule? Is that a rotation at 90 degrees clockwise? Um, Remember, we multiply and then switch. So when we go 90 degrees clockwise, we multiply the x coordinate by negative 1, and then we switch it around. Yes. Is this lesson just mostly about like how to get like, like from one to the other? Yes, that's the whole thing here, and there's lots of different ways to do it. This is more free form than most lessons because there's a lot of correct answers, not just one. But we're still looking for the most efficient answer. Yes. Did always get nine four? Nine four was built into nine one, nine two, and nine three seamlessly. Remember when we went back and we did all the algebra for nine one, nine two, and nine three? That was nine four. So we didn't actually skip it. You notice that we did nine one, nine two, nine three. Ten one, ten two. Now we're doing nine five and ten three. And the thing is, the book is kind of written not in the way I would do it sequentially. Um, this is a lot more sensible because it combines congruency with similarity. And when you're learning dilation or translations or rotations or whatever, you're also learning the coordinate rotation because the book separates them. It teaches you translations, reflections, rotations, and after you learn all that, then it goes back and teaches you that coordinate notation for translations, rotations, reflections. Why not just do them both together? It makes more sense. Hi. 
Alright. One more, and I'll let you try one on your own. Who wants to help me with this one? Oh, Lucas, the ticket paper. Um, Wilder? Oh, you're right, you're right. I put it in there 500 times. You're right. So if a figure is dilated, it does not maintain the congruency of its size, only its angle. So therefore, dilated image is not congruent. Better not get the problem on your exam. There's going to be a question like that. It's not on the practice test. It's going to be slid into the actual exam. You'll see. Let's try this. Alicia, identify a sequence that will transform L to M. Remember, alphabetical order. We do O and then P. So orientation. Is the orientation wrong? Yes or no? What can you do to try to fix the orientation? Wabin, you could rotate it. That would work. How many degrees would you rotate? 180. Let me ask you a question. We're, ro we're rotating 180. That is good. That will work to fix the orientation. What's the same as 180 degree rotation? Two, 360. No, not 270. 90 and 270 are the same. 360. No, the same as a 180 rotation around the origin is the same as a reflection. reflection across the origin. So you could have done either or. Either one is one move, and it would get you to this point, right? Over, I'm not on the right quadrant, so don't bother. I'm saying I'm wrong yet, I'm not wrong yet. Right there. How can I tell? This is one unit above the axis, this is one unit below. Orientation's good, I rotated it correctly. So we did a rotation of 108 degrees. Only one step left, what do you gotta do? Bobbin, translate it which direction? To the right, how many spots? One. So are these figures congruent? Yes, they are. We have a good sequence. It's just a little off because of my rotation, but let me fix that. Yeah, I know. It's going to drive me nuts, too. Don't worry. Here we go. Okay. We'll write this in, and then I'm going to ask a couple of you for alternate methods of transformation. Let's write in this sequence. This is a good sequence. We can use it. So um, this goes back to Alicia. Tell me the coordinate notation for what you did, child. The first thing that you did was rotating 180 degrees. What's your coordinate notation? It's the same as reflection across the origin. Negative x comma negative y. Perfect. Negative x comma negative y. And we'll just write fb followed by what came next? I think it was a translation. I think you slid into some DMs. You slid. You slid one unit to the right. So is that going to change the X or the Y? The X. And since you're going to the right, is that addition or subtraction? So we're just going to add 1 to the x, nothing happens to the y, that is a good sequence. Um, Shman, give me, you have a question? If you move to the left, is it negative? Yeah, if you move to the left, translation is negative. You have a question? I didn't get my ticket. No, I thought I did. No, there you go. Shman, give me another sequence that would work for this. What do you got? We'll reset it. We'll see if you can, oh, that's not a reset at all. all right, we'll reset and we'll see if you can give me something else that would work for this. What else? There's a couple different ways you could have done this. Besides the reflection across the origin, we won't use that. You could have done a different type of reflection, right? You could have done a couple different ones. Give me another two step sequence. What do you got? Well, we don't flip 180. Remember, flip is a reflection, turn is a rotation. So you, we already did the 180 turn, right? So what if we try, I don't know, flipping it across something? What can we flip it across to fix that orientation? The x-axis. Let's try that. We flip this across the x-axis. Hey, what do you know? That would have worked. And then one more move to finish it off. You would have had to move this how many units to the right? Three. Three. One, two, 
That would have also worked. There you go. Lots of different ways. So on your exam, as long as your sequence is good, totally fine. Any questions on this? All right. Once again, if a figure is not dilated, if a figure is dilated, I should say, it does not maintain the congruency of its size, only its angle, so therefore the dilated image is not congruent. There's got to be some reason I keep saying this. What's up? Um, I don't understand how you get the coordinate notation. Well, the coordinate notation, for which one? The translation, the reflection, no, the rotation? They're, they're just like the the one that you it's the rules. The coordinate notation rules that you've been learning all the way through the algebra. They're listed right there. Oh, the rules. The rules are right there, kiddo. Sorry, man. Any questions? Just remember, separate them with followed by. All right. So, we dealt with congruency. Well, let's talk about similarity. Two figures are similar if they can be obtained from the other by a sequence of translations, reflections, rotations, and we bring back our old friend, dilations. When you're dealing with similar figures, you can dilate them. Similar figures will still have the same shape. Notice that it doesn't matter if we're translating, reflecting, rotating, or dilating. We will always have the same shape. But similar figures may be different sizes. That's the only real difference between similar and congruent is that once we talk about similar figures, we now bring back from the soundproof booth our old friend, Mr. Dilation. Now, figures C and D here are similar, which means that there is a sequence that will turn C into D. But in order for us to turn C into D, we have to identify that sequence. And usually, the first thing that you want to do, what will make your life easier, is remember, we still go in alphabetical order. So when we were doing congruent figures, we dealt with the O, orientation, then we dealt with the P, the position. But what should we deal with here? We should check and see if we need to, what's D stand for? Dilation. dilation figure. We should fix the dilation, then the orientation, then the position. So we want to check to see if there's a dilation that needs to be done first. Obviously, we're dealing with similar figures. We'll take care of that dilation because there's going to be one. Now, similar figures can be dilated. I'm going to drive that point home as well. Just like with congruent figures, when you are told that two figures are similar, there must be a sequence of translations, reflections, rotations, and or dilations. We're going to knock out the dilation first. In order for... All right, so similar figures have the same shape, but they must be different sizes. When we are taking care of similar figures, we want to map them. We want to turn C and D. We want to take care of the dilation, then the orientation, and then the position, D-O-P. So the first thing we want to do is we want to identify the scale factor. That lets me know how I can dilate this figure. So I have to find K. In case you forgot, K represents my scale factor. K is my scale factor. How can I identify the scale factor given these two images? Dylan? Get one of the straight sides and count the units. Yeah, so remember, this is my pre-image. This is my image. So we're going to use this side right here. How long is that side? It's four units. It's four units. And how long is this side? Two That's two units. So we want to find the scale factor. The key question is, which one of those numbers is going to be your numerator? Four. Let's examine this. Remember the slide that talked about scale factors. The, num uh, the numerator will always be the integer from the side length of your image. Which one of those numbers is the image? Two. The image is D, so it's going to be, is that what you're going to say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's going to be 2. So we're going to do 2 over 4 to find K, and then we simplify that down to a smaller fraction, which is 1 half. So once I have the scale factor, I want to dilate these points, I have to go in and I have to get all of these coordinate pairs, and I have to dilate them by 1 half. So what we'll do is we'll look at this. What is the coordinate pair for this corner right here? Anybody? Um, Two comma two. So here's what you do. Let's go to a new thing. So I have k equals one half. I have the coordinate pair two comma two. Remember, 
when we're working with the scale factor and coordinate pairs, what do I have to do? What operation happens between the scale factor and the coordinate pairs? Multiplication. So I multiply one half times two. What is one half times two? One. Half of two is one. Half of two is one. So my new coordinate pair here is gonna be one comma one, and it goes there. I repeat that process for all of these coordinate pairs. This vertice right here, I do that to this vertice, and it goes right there, and this vertice, and it goes right here, and this one ends up right around the halfway mark. Once you've dilated all of your vertices, you go back and you connect everything with our old friend, Mr. Line. It's kind of off. It's kind of off. I mean, you get the basic idea, right? Excuse me for not being a better artist. That's what my guidance counselor said, you know what? Art may not be your thing, dude. Have you thought about a career as a professional burrito roller? And I said, no, I'm gonna teach math. They said, okay, go with that. All right, so it is a little off. We've dilated our figure. That's step one. Is the orientation good, yes or no? No. No, so there's one or two things I can do here. Um, Connor, you have a question? Yeah. What's up? How do you know which one is the image and the pre-image? Figure C and D are similar. Transform figure C into figure like, D. We're, we're so we're turning C into D. Will it tell us that? No? Yeah, it'll tell you. Okay. Or it'll say figure C is the pre-image, figure D is the image. Right. Or you'll see your prime notation. There'll be a, a million different ways for you to tell. This way it's something we're turning C into D. So we know we're going to turn this into this. So this is my pre, that's my image. Right. Now, back to my question. Orientation. What can I do to fix the orientation here, Kathy? What can I do? Rotation. I can do a rotation. What type of rotation? Not 90, 90 would, 90 would do this. 90, that's 90 oh, clockwise, 90. that's 90 counterclockwise. I'm not showing you the right position, I'm just showing you the orientation. You could, however, do it 180, and that's the same as reflecting it across the origin. So we'll do 180, let me fix the position here. And it's gonna go right there. That is a 180 degree rotation around the origin. Yes, what's up? How do you know which? Well, it's in all four quadrants right now. So remember that if a rotation is the same thing as a 180 degree reflection, all we're doing is taking the mirror image of this figure, right? Mirror image flips around, that's it. You could also just go back and do the coordinate notation, right? Multiply and switch, multiply and switch, multiply and switch, multiply and switch, and lastly, multiply and switch. Once we do the rotation or reflection, which for this would be negative x comma negative y, the last thing is we have to slide this up. How many units, guys? Let's see. One, two, four, three, four, five, five. So it was a three-step process. Dilation, rotation, translation. Okay. We need to go in. We need to write that sequence now. We'll leave k up there. We'll leave K and we're going to go and we're going to write the sequence. What was the first thing we did? Rotation. No? Dilation. <clears throat> our scale factor, our K was one half, so it's one half X comma one half Y. That's followed by what? What was the next thing? Rotation. Rotation or reflection. Either way, it's got the exact same notation. Negative X comma negative Y. There we go. And the last thing was a translation up of how many units? Five. And since we're going up, is that the X or the Y? Five. And since we're going up, is that addition or subtraction? Addition. addition. So it's X comma Y plus five. That's your sequence. Dilate, orientate, fix the position. D O P. District order of police. You have to do a followed by both of them. Yeah. Followed by, followed by, followed by. You have to set you have to do that to separate them. Okay. And then last but not least, don't forget that we can use dilation zero. Put these blanks in there for you. And then questions on this, because we always get questions when we get to this point. Questions, questions. Anybody have any questions? Do you understand what we're doing here? Does it just seem like systems of equations where it gets tedious? Kind of. Now remember, I can do it here. When you do this, you're gonna have to do coordinate notation, five vertices. More coordinate notation on five vertices more coordinate notation on five vertices. So you're actually doing 15 steps to do this. Kind of a tedious process, right? What's up? Was the smaller figure in the bigger thing or we had to get it back or something? The smaller, well, what we did is we started with C. We want to figure out how to get to D. 
So what we did is we shrank down C, kind of like honey, I shrunk the kids. We shrunk it down, <laughs> then we flipped it, and then we moved it up. So it was a whole bunch of things. We kind of took this figure here. Let's say we had this thing, right? This is my eraser. We took it, and then my eraser's gone. I don't know where it got. There it is. We took that, say that's our eraser. We shrunk it down, and then we fixed the orientation, and then we slid it into the right position. So it was a three-step process. And if you wonder when you ever use this, if you ever plan on investing any amount of time in any type of engineering, architecture, or anything like that. I'm oh, sorry. What? Cool. <laughs> then that's what you gotta do. Okay? Any other questions on this? What's up? Is it possible to do it backwards? Um, okay, could you do it backwards? You could. You could always do this. You could slide it up first. Now, it's hard for you to figure out the translation before it's the right size. Because this is bigger, you won't really know where it lands. So the translation is probably the last thing you want to do. You could have rotated or reflected it first, right? Then done the dilation, then the translation. There are still multiple ways to do this. It's easier if you do dilation, orientation, position. So which means dilation, then a reflection or rotation, and then a translation. That's the easiest sequence. What's up? So you're always going to have to do it in that order and dilation. I would. That's the easiest way to do it. Or give me the easiest way. Just like remember when you solved like equations, I always told you to move over the smaller coefficient because you would get a positive coefficient. It makes your life easier, less room for error. It's the easiest way to do it. Okay? All right. Any questions on this? Here's what we're going to do. We're only doing one of these. No class usually picks the same one as the previous class. So here's what we have. We have figure A right here. I'll draw it out real quick. And we're going to pick just one of these, and we're going to try to find the sequence. And this is the last thing that we're doing for today. We're going to figure out whether we want to turn it into figure B, C, or D. And we're going to find the sequence that gets us there. So let's see who's going to pick the sequence. The sequence will be picked by... Flash. Which one do you want to do? You want to turn it into B, C, or D? Um, C. You're going to turn it into C. Okay, so we're going to do this one. We'll work with just C. You guys can always go back and try to do B or D on your own. Just for fun. I know that's what we do when we go home. You're like, what? Social media? Video games? On my hoverboard? You mean my walking fireball? No. Yeah. I'm going to do math. So we're going to turn A into C. Flash doesn't have to answer the question, though. No. Ali does. Ali, mm -hmm. give me the first step of the sequence. We go through, we first need to identify if any dilation needs to happen here. So you need to check to see if these things are the same size. Easiest way to do that is by checking out one of the horizontal sides. How long is this side? Six units. Six units. So we go and we check C. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they're the same size. Do we need to do a dilation? No. no, we don't. So we move on to the next one. Reflection or rotation to get us here. What do you think is going to get us to the right orientation? A reflection. Now, if you reflect it across the X, you'll end up like this. That doesn't fix the orientation. If you reflect it across the Y, it's going to look just like that. It's not going to change it. So, reflection ain't going to work. Let's try something else. What else you got? Rotation. Rotation. Tell me, what type of rotation? 90 degrees. 90 degrees what? Clockwise. Clockwise is going to take you and put you like that. Meow. What else you got? Counterclockwise. Meow. Hey, there we go. So 90 degrees counterclockwise. That was the first actual step. Can somebody give me the coordinate notation for a 90 degrees counterclockwise? Negative y, comma, x. Negative y, comma, x. Thank you very much. 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation. One more step to finish this off, and we're done. And it's all over. I know. And I'm going to go to sleepy. Sleepy, what you got? Come on. Um. Right there, bud. What you got? We got one more step to put it in the right spot. D. No, we're turning A into C. So, what's the last step, dude? Slide to the left. How many spots? Six. 
six spots. Let's save each row. Alright. One. Start right there, right? Right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if it wasn't for my horrible drawing, it would be exact. But yes, that is good. But you don't have to hook yet! Don't help him. Shh. Silence. I need a coordinate notation for what you just did. Coordinate notation Remember, you took it, you slid it that way. So, <laughs> <laughs> what'd you do? Which way'd you go? You moved it to the left on the X axis. Is that addition or subtraction? Subtraction. How many units did you move it? Six. So what are you subtracting from X? Six, six units. Alright, there we go. Six. six units right there. X minus six, comma Y. Nothing changed on the Y. That's a good sequence. No, followed by this one. There we go. Don't forget the FP. What do you do? Followed by. Don't forget the Facebook. It's even blue, just like Facebook. Hey, Mark. Zuckerberg, if you're watching, you're saying though, bro. I could use a six-figure job, dude. Wait, That's another reason. That matters. All right, and don't forget similar no, figures sure. can be dilated, where congruent figures cannot be dilated. Any questions on this? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? What's up? I have two tickets. Oh, you too. I'll give you two. All right.